So in this video, we are going to talk about the easy Modbus library and using the basic tag method of talking to any generic device. The easy Modbus library version that I'm using today is 0.1.6.3, as you can see here. And it should be said that this is a custom library, so it is not supported by any control techniques technical support group. So if you come down here into the MCI 210, you'll notice that there are third party devices. If your device is not one of the third party devices, you can still use this library to talk to it very easily. And that is by using the generic tag method. This tag method has two parts to it. One is the main block and the other part is the structure. The structure holds several pieces of data in it, as you can see over here under the documentation. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to make an array of this structure called tag basic for your IO device that you have. And each one of the registers will be associated to one of the elements in the array. And I'll show you that a little bit later. The generic tag basic block here basically consumes your tag array and just starts doing whatever settings you have set in the tag array and just does it for you. All right, so here I'm showing you in the project I have this remote IO as a global variable and I created a, an array called Phoenix IO and this array has basically 21 elements. The array has to start with zero. It's just part of the requirements for this basic tag system here. And it is of tag basic. So just like I said, you make an array of this type. So that's what I've done here. All right, so now we need to set up the data inside this array. So what I like to do is I use a action that I only call on power up or startup. And I use this action to set up part of the data. So over here on the right side is my action called setup tag for Phoenix. And as you can see, it says remote IO dot Phoenix. And then we have this little zero in the brackets, right? And what this means is this is element zero, element one, element two, element three, four, and so on. You'll notice that over here, I have 21 elements in my array and I'm only setting up seven. Well, that's okay because by default, the tag basic has this function code called do nothing. So by default, all of the elements in this array are doing absolutely nothing. All right, so the key thing to know is you need to know what function call to use, what register you're gonna to write to, and the unit number. Most IO block devices are all unit number one because they don't technically use it. But some devices do, so you need to be aware. So today we're using the Phoenix. So if I go to the Phoenix IO, I showed this in the other video, but this particular Phoenix tells me what the registers are. Okay, so I'm gonna put this data in my code. So I come over here and you can see I'm putting a register of 9006, okay? And I'm going to write a single register. So this is the function code I'm gonna use. And I'm also gonna to write to register 9000. As you can see, this is 9000 for this one and 9006 for this one. The one thing you need to know about different I.O. modules, the Phoenix is one of them, is that the lower byte and the upper byte of the word that's being transmitted may be reversed. It's that whole little Indian versus big Indian kind of thing. So if you run into that situation, you'll notice that when you go to write to one of your digital outputs and inputs that it seems to be on the wrong set of eight. And to fix that, all you have to do is put the following in. So on this, this 9006, it has 16 inputs. This is the same register. So up here I'm reading it, down here I'm writing it, but I need to swap the bytes in the system. When it gets out there, it's fine. Now the rest of it, I could add the swap bytes, but it doesn't really matter because there's only four digital inputs. So there's nothing for it to mess up. If you see things, 
being out of order, you might need to do this. Also, this needs to be a three. All right, and here's the last part of it. This is the code that you'll need. Really, the only line you really need is this line right here to get it to work. I did add this line as well. This is part of this block. It is a block that shows you the history, but it's not very important when using the tag system, and I'll show you why later. To set this up, what you need to do is give it an IP address. You need to use these keywords called address and size of. So what you're doing is this input here is supposed to be a pointer to the tags. So here's my array of tags. And this needs to know where that is in memory space. So that's what this address command does. So it says, I want to give this input the address of where this lives in memory. And this one called the size of does the same thing, but instead of giving it the address, it gives you the size of this array and passes it into size of tag. And the rest of this is just tied to my digital inputs right now, but the key one is this one called start. All right, so let's go online. All right, so now I'm online. I'm gonna minimize some of this so we can see more of what I wanna see. So on the left side, I have my data tags, and now I can expand it. And I'm gonna look at number five, or you could say sixth tag in my array of tags here. And it's pointed to 9006. And you can see I got it set to write a single register, and there are no errors here. See, and this little number here tells you how often, how many times that we've actually done this action. And here's the actual live value that we're writing. Ah, here's the same register. So we're writing here, and we are reading here. And you notice that the data here isn't matching that. That's because when I came back over here, I forgot the turn on the swap byte we just got done talking about. So I'm gonna turn this on here. I'm gonna force it on. So now that it's forced on, you can see that the data lines up. All right? Now if you have a problem, say we wanted to force an error to happen so you could see what an error looked like, um, I can do this a couple ways. One is just by unplugging the bus coupler, but I'm gonna just change the address that I'm writing to to an address that doesn't actually exist. So I'm gonna go 9050. And you can see that there's now an error message when it goes to try to write this one. It says register address not correct. You can also see that the update counter stopped. Okay, now we're still trying to write these values here, but you notice because I'm not writing to the same register, this value here is not updating anymore. In other words, because I'm not writing it to 9006, I'm still reading it, it's just the value's not changing. So this says there's no errors over here, but that's because this input six is on. All right. So I turn that off and every time it goes and reads past this particular tag, it's it's getting this error history. So some of the tags are saying, hey, there's no error and others are showing, hey, there's an error. So this is not as useful unless you have a connection, but it's not as useful. This is really nice that each one of these tags you get to go and look at and say, is it working? Oh, that one's fine. That one's fine. This one, oh, there's a problem. What's the problem? And look, now it's all happy. So the other things to know is this thing called one shot. One shot just means that it runs through all the tags one time and then it stops. So if it's on, you have to keep cycling the start to keep executing through all the tags. What this on error go to next means is if this is off like it is here then it'll go down the tag list and once it hits an error so you know how we had an error here the next tag below it would not execute it wouldn't even try it would just start back at the top and work its way down that is its default behavior if you want it to just go on and read and write all the rest of the tags 
then you turn this on and it would say, ah, oh, I know I had an error here, but I'm just going to keep trying with the rest of these and see if they work. If you like this video, please subscribe or put a comment below.